come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review and talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not. Mm. In our quest for total world domination, these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. What did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched The Watcher. You mean that documentary on Netflix? Not that one. You mean, you mean that, movie that, that movie Monroe? with Michael Monroe? Not that one. You mean that other, other movie called The Watcher? Are... Yeah. Yep. No. Nope, oh, not that one. You mean the movie with uh, Corey Haim yep. and the the dog, the crazy dog? Yeah. Not that the one. The sequel okay. with Mark Singer? Watchers Two? Yes. Not that one. <laughs> okay. What the Which hell? one the Witcher was it? with Henry Cavill? He maybe he just said a, a letter wrong. Oh no! I don't the, yeah, it was. Was it The remember. Witcher? Was it The Witcher? Is that <laughs> what you meant to that. say? Yeah. No, we watched The Watcher from two thousand. Wow. Oh, wow! What kind of trouble did you have finding this movie on any streaming platform? <laughs> I had no trouble, oh, Colin. Okay. Us the tonight one that had, had trouble. some trouble. <laughs> uh, Alec, I don't know oh, what I don't want to you say were name, searching but, for, but but the I the smart device watcher. did not could uh, not but find on it. What what did you search for? I uh, used Alexa and on the Fire TV, and I searched for Watcher. Then I searched for Watcher Keanu Reeves. Right, but the then, first time you searched, it automatically started pl- going to the Netflix yeah, documentary. Netflix. It didn't even right, give us yeah. the option. It was like this is it's what like, you want. What you want? Yeah. So why are there so many movies with this title? Because it is it's creepy, creepy. Uh, someone who watches. Mm-hmm. It's creepy. Who watches the Watcher? Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyone the who watch doesn't. Men. The anyone, watch men watch the Watcher. Anyone who doesn't think that it's creepy, you're a man. You are. The, you might be the Watcher. <laughs> you, oh. might you might be the, be the one oh. watching. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't think it's creepy, you might yeah, be the one watching. True. I was going to ask what kind of genre this movie, is, but we'll get into it. So, yeah. what, what year? Well, you already said two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. And directed. By. Oh, directed, this name's not real. Uh, Joe Charbonick. <laughs> Well, we know Mr. Charbonick from anything else. Well, if you are familiar with Keanu Reeves' band, um, <laughs> that Dog Star. I Dog can't Star? say I am. Um, he did a lot of filming for Dog Star. Oh, really? God, yeah, it's one so, of his band um, friends. Did huh? Keanu Reeves get him this job? No, really. This the the reason that people remember this movie. It is the movie that Keanu Reeves was tricked into filming. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what's the story about? This? No, yeah. I didn't have it. Please. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we so like I said, Joe Charbonneck was like the filmographer for Dog Star on tour, mm-hmm. right? He filmed also, and so he and Keanu Reeves became pretty good friends. And then casually one day, the story is they were playing like street hockey or like okay. hockey, like just right, like sure. hanging out playing hockey. Mm-hmm. And he told him about this movie that he wanted to do. And Keanu Reeves was like, Oh, that sounds really cool. You know, like I, I you know, I'd, I'd be happy to help you out, you know, mm-hmm. do a small part. You can put my name in it, that kind of right. thing. So it was like a verbal agreement kind of thing. So then Joe Charbonick went on to actually get it written and get it like in line to be produced and he forged Keanu Reeves' name on a contract saying that he would be in it. What? Holy shit. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. And what? So, yep. And Universal picked up the movie and decided to produce it because, you know, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And then not only did he forge the name, but then he also increased the small part to one of the leading yeah. roles. <laughs> this is an and Keanu Reeves. This is an and Keanu that, Reeves, yeah. yeah. So it was supposed to be just like a cameo to say that he was in it. Right. Yeah. And it ended up being he was like one of the stars, the villain of the this, movie. This sounds kind of bogus because I assume if somebody forges your name, like you don't have any kind of legal stand. It's not a binding contract. Well, yeah. So he, Keanu Reeves like consulted his legal team because he's like, I don't want to do this fucking mm-hmm. movie. Like I, mm-hmm. I said I would, you know, do a small bit part for my friend and now my name's on here. I didn't sign this right. shit. And they basically came down to like, it's going to be a pain in the ass to try to get anything to back you on this. You might as well do the movie. Does the signature look that good? Because it's going it to be easier to just easier. take the paycheck well, and do the job. Because yep. it and gets announced in Variety and all Well, that and what you would spend in legal fees fighting it. Exactly. You just do the job and make the money. Exactly. Yeah. No way. Yes. I don't believe no, this, this is, is okay. This is true. And 
and it got and it started it got even worse because then Keanu Reeves found out that both James Spader and Marissa Tomei were getting paid more than him. Jesus Christ. So like yeah, it that's... kept like piling up how yeah. horrible the situation was. Yeah. Oh, so this guy's a piece of shit, is what yeah. you're saying. I, they were not friends anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't find anything to clarify that, but yeah. I'm guessing they're not friends yeah. anymore. Has he directed anything else? Not really. No. Did he direct I mean no, like I, you can look up his creds. Like he really didn't do anything else. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's he got, done some like, shorts and, but yeah, no, nothing. Like I had never heard of him, and yeah, hmm. nothing really. So this was like his one, his hmm. one out. Um, this is an odd movie. I it's guess a maybe very odd for that. Movie. And Keanu Reeves uh, refused to do press for it. Nice. He he was, <laughs> and he he did. I don't know if he signed. He had to have signed something. He agreed with Universal. Like he wasn't going to do any press for it, but he also wasn't going to say anything bad about it until a year after its release. Mm. Okay, because did he, he say anything bad about it after a year after its what release? He, he was like, "I never wanted to do this movie. I was tricked into it." Oh, but here's okay. the, the thing: if that were to happen nowadays, it would be the opposite. It'd be like you're going to do all these interviews about how you fucking hated being in this movie because that's good press Great for press. the movie. Yeah. Look at all the drama oh, around yeah. "Don't Worry, Darling," and that movie oh, was so absolutely. mediocre. But wow, I was going to go see that movie because there was drama <laughs> around it for months leading yeah. up to it. Like, so yeah, if the, nowadays they would this stuff would be leaking. Like oh, as God, the movie yes. was being made, they'd yeah. be like, "Oh my god, yeah." yeah it's, it's amazing to see how like PR has changed yeah. just in the last twenty years. Right, because you are absolutely correct. Yeah, like everyone wants to see like the, the shit show, with the drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you were absolutely right. If it had come out, like, Canaries was tricked into this movie. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to oh, go, see, gotta go it. see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? We yes. would do a freak show field trip on it right? if it came out now, for We'd sure. We would absolutely yeah. see a movie that Canaries was yeah. tricked into uh, doing. Yeah. Where was Keanu Reeves at this point in his career? Because it seems like he was on, like, I remember when this came out, was the replacements around this he point in the, time? And obviously, like, Matrix had already come out. He was already riding that high. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the replacements... Um, yeah, well, what oh, the? Gosh, what it else? wasn't the Matrix like ninety nine. I think so. Yeah, there's somewhere like it was very close to the end of the nineties, correct? And then, yeah, uh, yeah, ninety nine. And then there were two Matrix sequels. So I mean, yeah. like, yeah, so he, he was, was riding the Matrix okay, high so right he now. He was a big. Deal. He was huge right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it just it seems weird because. I mean, my memory of watching it, you know, even back then was like, this seems like a weird um, choice. Speed for, and Devil's for... Advocate had already come out at this point, yeah, too. They, yeah, so well, he is, like, out. famous. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. he's huge at this point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It seemed a weird choice mm-hmm. for him I, to make yeah, this I rem- movie, I remember even this, back then. Yeah, I remember when this came out, um, I mean, when it was, two, oh God, I don't know how old I was in 2000, but... Um, I was young at this point, but even I was like, I had, I think I saw it in the theater. <laughs> and, yeah, I watched this movie... A lot, and I yeah. can't, I can't what? tell you exactly how this came on my radar, like to be a movie that I rewatched so much, but I did. Okay, a so lot. you can't explain why you were rewatching it so much. It just it was on, or so you sought it out. I I well I, I it's just one of those movies, man. I can't explain comfort it. food. Yeah. Okay. I watched a lot. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it feels like something that would have been on HBO a lot. You that know, might have been it. I could it was... totally see like the game and then the watcher right after that on, <laughs> yeah. on HBO. You know, that might have been it because mm-hmm. I remember watching this quite a bit. Mm-hmm. All right, who else is in this movie? So we, obviously we have Ken Reeves, we have James Spader, and we have Marissa Tomei, mm-hmm. uh, Ernie Hudson. Mm-hmm. For a second, oh my a, god! Does he have like second. five lines in this movie? Something like that, yeah. It's like why even cast him for that role? Uh, well, I, I was thinking that like uh, for a lot of this, I'm yeah. like, why did Marissa Tomei do this? This is a short, shallow, you know, character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why did Ernie Hudson do this? You know, Marissa Tomei. I, I feel like and- Marissa Tomei went through like a weird phase in her career where I think she was in a lull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I remember mm-hmm. right, I think she she did this and she did a small part in What Women Want. Mm-hmm. And I yeah, think she, she's she a was, supporting character. She was in that a movie. supporting character yeah. in a few movies at this time. I mm-hmm. think she was in a weird lull. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. she's kind of figured out how to use supporting character. Like that's where the character act. That's where kind of where she is right now, right? Is, yeah, uh, the wrestler yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Spider Man and yeah. you know, yeah, stuff she's like there that. to support the dude on his journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I mean that's a good I but think I mean, payday. She, you know, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah, those she are gets, good. Is yeah. if you can get into I think we've always said if you can get into the character actor supporting mm-hmm. you know and you're she not must the lead, be, you can work forever. She must be good to work with too because she gets cast all the time yeah. in like mm-hmm. good stuff. Yeah. So she I must have her. a good reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. that's the upside mm-hmm. to that. Mm-hmm. It's a it's not stardom. Yeah, but it's, but it's like, famous enough. Yeah, she was. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. my cousin Vinny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, she but she's still in theatrical that. films. I guess mm-hmm. is yeah. my point. Yeah. Like you, you can still be in theatrical yep. stuff, and you're mm-hmm. not like top lining some yeah. crap thing that you know. She does all those like 
not exactly this, but she does those like book club type movies, you know, mm. those like older women does movies she? nowadays. Yeah, nowadays, every once in a while, she I mean, pops up and stuff Aunt like May. that. Yeah. Spider Man. Yeah. yeah. But she's got that new movie coming out with Peter Dinklage and Anne Hathaway. Oh, really? She's in that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm pretty excited yeah, about cool that movie. movie. Oh, fuck. I don't remember what it's called, but Peter Dinklage plays a playwright that is like going through like a writer's block and he's like, ha- he's got a rocky marriage with his wife, Anne Hathaway. And he meets like his new muse, who's like a ship captain, and it's Marissa Tomei. Oh, oh, oh. It like I read the premise and I was like, this sounds like a fucking fever dream. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound real. And then I saw the trailer and I was like, it's... I am so in for this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's something. It looks mm. so mm-hmm. great. Well, James Spader, this is um he's always been like an interesting person to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I'm I don't know how you guys feel, but I, I love James Spader. I like James Spader. I've always liked him. Yeah. I like him, but he always comes off as evil. No matter what like he's always <laughs> just reads as a villain to Why me. Is like he, is it because it's the way he talks. It's measured. Yeah. He's very like mannered. Mm-hmm. Like he bottles everything or not bottles it up, but it's like he's severe. everything has a very um specific he like everything he says is it's very direct but it's also got intention behind it yeah but it's never like super emotional it's never no, yeah it doesn't seem like he's the type he of guy seems like he, a serial killer it yeah, feels yeah. yeah it feels like he's like one one mi- minor inconvenience away from just snapping all the yeah. time like it feels like he's right on the edge he's, just white knuckling it through so life he feels like the, there's like an energy there that's caged yeah and you're yeah. just yes. waiting for like the the, yeah. the james spader explosion like, all it's gonna take is someone to cut him off on traffic and he's gonna fucking lose his mind yeah that's what yeah. it feels like when he end up um uh, uh, the blacklist, right? Yeah, that, for uh, like eight seasons or some shit. Yeah, he looks so show. different now. When yeah. you go back, it's like, well, he still looks kind of youngish. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, you know, in 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 the watch, well, you know, yeah. twenty three years ago. But, yeah, uh, when he was the incomparable Robert California. Yeah, in the, in the office. office, and he looked <laughs> he looked oh, right. old there, but he was supposed to look kind of shitty. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he get his start? Was he sexualizing videotape? No, it wasn't James Spader, was it? Uh, no. Nope. His start? I don't know what his start was. Yeah, but it seems like he was in like a lot of those like you know nineties like, character mm-hmm. uh, yeah. dramas. I mean, um, he will always be the asshole from Pretty in Pink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, John Hughes. Was he in that. Wolf? Yeah, right. He was. Yeah. He was yeah. Wolf, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yep. Uh, that was a villain. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah, playing yeah. in his kind. Is of, he on the was- wall then? Because Wolf was done in the show, right? Do we do Wolf? We went on Wolf. Oh. I don't think we've done Wolf. No. Hmm. Yeah. No, hmm. he okay. I mean, <laughs> But I love James Bader because he always, he's always like smarmy, like like he's even when he's supposed to be bad, you still kind of there's something charming about mm-hmm. him. And there's a, like a intensity. Maybe, there's an uh, intensity, yeah. yeah. Um. So, what genre does this movie fall in for the folks at home who haven't seen it? What are we? What What's the watch? We're gonna. Yeah, we're saying this is a psychological thriller. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's, let's pin that down. Is it a genre of um, movies that are made that uh, make women uneasy? Is this like the young woman? The, the the in the. It's like it's, it's not true crime. It's the, it, it, it is. is. It's yeah. that like post seven like crime thriller yeah. wave. You know, it's yeah. it's a police procedural slash. Yeah. like like you said, like it's it, it serial makes killer people drama comfortable mm-hmm. serial killer drama. Yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. it's always there's uh you know the watcher is some guy who watches women targets women will sneak into their house mm-hmm. and kill them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's Keanu Reeves. You yeah. know, you're like, what is Keanu Reeves is, you know, yeah. generally seen as a, you know, at least a, some type of uh, yeah. heroic but, I mean, figure. That's, that's what I was getting at earlier. And I kind of cut off course. Like I watched this so much when I was younger and I think it's because I was fascinated by Keanu Reeves playing this part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's the reason you watch it to begin with. Like he's the yeah. bad guy. Yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. see this. Yeah. yeah. Keanu Reeves as the bad guy. Come yeah. and see the watcher. So who is, Keanu Reeves in The Watcher. Uh, so he his name is David Allen Griffin. Okay. And that's really all we know about well, him. Well, because that's a serial killer. He's always a yep. name. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's literally all we know about him. We never get like a backstory. We never get anything at which I kind of, I dig that. Mm-hmm. I like that we don't get anything about him. Because he's serving as the foil to the main character, and that's James Spader, right? Correct. So. This is because I think this is always the danger that I see in these movies is that they kind of glorify the serial killer. Like this is a serial killer glorification movie. It seems like he's they do um, make him very cool or yeah. they try to at they least. Yeah. yeah. In 2000, it's, he was he very was very cool. cool yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. He outthinks all the cops. He wears and, a leather jacket. Yeah, and the women find him irresistible. Yeah. Well, he wants to reason. kill him, but you, you know, you're like, I don't really get his motive for yeah. why he wants to kill people because he seems like a well-adjusted, you know, person on the street. Like you wouldn't pick him out and be like, right. this guy. Yeah, you know? but I mean, that's how a lot of yeah, serial killers are. Yeah, it's like yeah, but they're real. usually psychopaths and they pretend a lot. Like he yeah. doesn't seem to be. He's like a dancer. He likes to you know, twirl around with the. He feels like music. some that okay yeah that <laughs> threw me off almost immediately. That this movie started with almost all of Dragula. Yeah, like, yeah. Keanu Reeves it's, dancing to Dracula. Yeah, you go. and your reaction made. Me I was tickle. like, "What?" Yeah, yeah, it was like, <laughs> well, I I was all of a sudden remembered or reminded that it was 2000 yeah. when this movie no. came out. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it, I I need to make a montage of all the movies that have Dracula in it because it's a lot of it's them lot. now. Yeah. And it like even I was watching King of the Hill the other day and there was an episode where they play almost all of Dracula. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. King and I was like, King of the Hill is so they're, they're, they're at a drag race and it's in the background ah, and they're at a drag race, yeah. but you hear. Classic. Damn near the whole song. That's There's like a, a montage to is it, it too. Like public, like yeah, is it really is it public cheap domain? Rob Zombie's got to be making a mint off <laughs> yeah. of the license just for that one yes. song, you know. But, but uh, they call him know. like, "Hey, Rob, can we?" Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> yep. You have my Venmo. Cut just send it directly check. there. Don't even bother with the check. Yeah. Um. Okay. So he's a <laughs> he's dancing um, to Dracula, a bunch of amongst a bunch of candles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like you do. A, yeah. This movie. This movie has a a, a crutch where it kind of like it does a lot of foreshadowing, like visual foreshadowing mm. Mm. that doesn't really make sense until later, obviously. Well, it has a so like the 2000s were also um, this is like the beginning of um, the digital intermediary in editing, yes. right? Where you could. It uh, was the experimental age. Yeah, it was kind of <laughs> yeah, right. Was. Um, yeah. The only problem, I think like watching these things from like a modern perspective is you're like, well, you know, after effects and all that have become like available to the folks at home. And like, we can do much better than this now. Yeah. And so you kind of look back on this period going like, Oh, these title sequences are after effects, title sequences and uh, they're editing, you know, it's like they can do mm-hmm. nonlinear editing. There's a lot of reliance on um, like negative f- frame flashes throughout this entire yeah. movie yeah. where it'll flash to like a negative image of the shot and then back to the positive yeah. image. Um, you know, that looks like a whatever solarized or whited out. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and then there's also um, a lot of the movie, because at some point I it was so aware of this that I'm like, there's this, it's like a strobe effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, employed through the whole, which I just mm-hmm. find fucking annoying and always have. <laughs> uh, but they're doing that. And uh, it's a what, very 2000 thing. Yeah. And for some reason, whenever we see through Keanu Reeves' uh, perspective, mm-hmm. it's always like digital video. Yeah. I don't know why. why. Yeah. The, only, the only time that that like really was like, what the fuck are you doing? Was like, he goes to see the psychiatrist at some point, mm-hmm. And we, every time you see her from his perspective, it's a digital video. And you're like, yeah. he's not like recording. With it looked video. like the, the quality copy of uh demon warp. We watched last week. <laughs> yeah. That's about yeah. the quality. It looked wow. But, and it, it's yeah. very, it, it's very out of place in the scenario. Like usually when we see that type of thing, it's, um, some sort of like robotic digital analog, like, you know, right. data vision. And it's like a robot. Yeah. But this is like an actual person. It's a person. Yeah. So He's like, why is his vision like this? Stroboscopic. Yeah. It's a yeah. weird. Because, okay. Well, yeah. then you go like, okay, they're trying to say that like, you know, yeah, he, what are they he saying? records people or something. And so like, he actually like, that's the visual uh, yeah. way that he experiences the world is through like tape and recording. But that's not a part of his that's psychology. That's not his thing. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of this. But, and, you I mean, know, as I was like, sitting there going like, I'm would... trying to build like, who the fuck is this guy? Because there's yeah. no like. There's nothing like that like goes the, to thematic. The negatives makes more sense to me because he does take photos of all of his victims. So if he's got like photo vision, that and makes the camera sense. To would me. also be the digital video would also be photo uh, photo vision. Are you going with I the mean, same theme there? I'm, I'm, I mean, what I'm saying is I think that's what they're going for. Even though I don't think the digital like video translates that. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, we also established that James Spader has like crippling migraines, and so I That's thought maybe the strobe, yeah, like, the, the oh the, the flash frame, the is different like, flashing in the strobe, that like that kind of thing. I think yeah. that is 
for the James Spader character. That's his point of view, but I, I feel like throughout the movie, I, we were seeing those flash frames in scenes that he wasn't in. Because I could be Keanu wrong. Reeves is, is contributing to that. His migraines are a, are a side effect of his like depressive like psychosis, and Keanu Reeves is the cause of that. So I think that's why it's connected with him. Okay. Sure. Okay. This is very right. much works me for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it works for me. <laughs> I believe I don't know you. If I'm going to accept that, but let's go with it because yeah. I can't. There's nothing Again, else. This is my hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, can't, I, I can't refute there's it. There's no so, rebuttal yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because we don't know what you're doing, is, Joe. Is yeah. it Joe? Joe. This Joe. is me saying I have no idea what else it could be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other than, uh, hey, this is cool. Mm-hmm. An effect that we can do with our uh, Avid. You and know. again, right. like watching this in a 2000 scope, this was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very It cool. was. I hated it back then. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were different people. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It also has like, you know, you cut away from uh, scenes as, you know, you don't let dialogue play out and all this yeah. other stuff. It's uh, um, like, how old, how old were you in 20, in 2000? Uh, in my 20s. Right. Yeah. And you had already like had a pretty extensive yeah. years studying yeah. film. Yeah. Yeah. You had I was, a film education. Yeah, I was like 15. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is cool. <laughs> there you go. This is new. I've never seen this before. Well, that's what they were going for, I guess, like right with this era. Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. But it's just, it's funny to look back on it now. So um, who's James Spader in this scenario? James Spader is the FBI agent that has been handling Keanu Reeves cases when they lived in L.A. Because James Spader has relocated to Chicago. Mm -hmm. That's where this whole movie takes place is in Chicago. Filmed Mm -hmm. in. Which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, It's all filmed in Chicago. Filmed Mm -hmm. in Oak Park. It's Mm -hmm. all. It sure looked like it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. On the scale of Chicago set movies, where does this rank? Pretty high up. uh, Yeah. Honestly, like watching this, I was like, Chicago's a fucking beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always appreciative when they actually shoot a movie there. Yeah. I didn't get. So rarely happens. um, You know, sometimes uh, you get like a, a Chicago native will shoot um landmark you know like how the city looks to somebody who you know is unfamiliar with it Mm -hmm. this guy's not really that i was aware of not really doing that it's just like it could be any big city Mm -hmm. uh except for there's certain streets obviously that you're like well that's the street from the dark night and there's mm -hmm. under lower and when they were looking for him and i was like he's in evanston (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) okay yeah he was really far north yeah i did appreciate that like a lot of the outdoor like chase scenes and like everything like you could they made sure to have like traffic in the you know the yeah. highways in the background or you know something it was like okay we're actually there you know yeah. I, I, Colin I think you might have stepped out of this part but there was a part where they said he's going to the Gold Coast and uh-huh. I said oh so he's killing rich people well maybe we should just like hear him out on this a little bit maybe he's got a plan here like he's going to one of the richest like neighborhoods in the entire world and yeah Which I'm supposed to feel bad that? okay so so yeah all right so so victims mm-hmm. oh right right so okay, there's so. so so james spader mm-hmm. has a history tracing this guy through like how many at least 11 at least 11 yeah. murders in los, in los angeles and james spader apparently is like yeah. not quit the fbi but he's on some kind of leave and so he yeah. leaves los he's on angeles disability. yeah it comes yeah. to chicago why is he on disability um for all of his migraine and anxiety issues he's heavily medicated for them mm-hmm. so like as in he, as he says that doesn't really mesh well with a job yeah, yeah. we get the yeah. perfunctory kind of scenes where you always have the uh the the troubled detective the mm-hmm. troubled police yeah. officer right yeah because it as the story goes as the movie goes on like the story unfolds of what happened and like how he became there and everything so like all we know is that he left la after some traumatic experience involving keanu reeves in the case mm-hmm. and everything but we don't know well we know that it's keanu reeves but i guess he didn't know which was i guess right. something that i was unaware of and had to kind of piece together through the movie that right. like he's never actually seen keanu no, reeves he has face. seen right he's seen him like running he's seen like yeah, a man his in black. silhouette yeah. Yeah. yeah so there was a night apparently where where a woman was in a house. There's a fire. We see James Spader in there. He uh, leaves her tied to a chair so he can apprehend the suspect who mm-hmm. heads out the door and chases him down through strobo vision mm-hmm. and then lets him go so he can return to the house. But unfortunately, 
a fire has broken out in his absence and he is unable to save the woman. She dies in a fire. This Mm -hmm. has now set up a traumatic experience that has led to all these uh, paralyzing migraines. There was a Mm -hmm. scene early on that establishes like how much he's uh, how much medication he's on. Yeah, he's like popping pills and then there's a scene when he's like having an attack and he actually is like fumbling with a syringe and injects himself in the stomach with something. And at this point we're all like, okay. And his stomach is like really bruised. It's really bruised. So something himself. he does frequently. Yeah. And at this point we're all kind of confused, like, okay, well what the is, fuck is, was that? Is this, is this the, a migraine attack? Yeah. Is this an anxiety attack? Like what's he injecting himself with? Um, and it turns out, yes, it's a migraine attack, mm-hmm. and he was injecting himself with migraine medicine. Mm-hmm. I did not know that you could do. Yeah, and he like <laughs> rattles off a bunch of other med- medications, and the dosage is all like two hundred milligrams, which is yeah. fucking insane. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a lot. I like that of somebody, anything. the screenwriter, had yeah. to Google it. Well, before yeah. Google, right, had yeah. to go and research, and damn it, they're going to put it all yeah. in there. Yes, I'm on this many uh, like, you know, milligrams of this, and then I take this, and then I inject. He's like, myself. I take two hundred grams a second, all and I sleep two yeah. hours. Yeah. Like, God damn. Yeah. It's like, Jesus like, Christ. Okay, so this okay, leads Judy. to, like, yeah. he's... So he, because of his medicated status, right, mm-hmm. later he is, of course, like, brought back onto the case. And there's all this distrust, I guess, in the department, which is vocalized by one guy. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> distrust, and it causes conflict for a scene. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. how does this guy... They He's forget like, it pretty quick. <laughs> him and his barbiturate addiction and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, how does he know that? And, and well, yeah, why yeah. is this bleeding into this thing? Yeah. 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 It, it's a meaningless moment that only lasts for like 30 seconds. Yeah, because Michaela, I think when we were watching, it was like, okay, they're setting up the unreliable narrative. Yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, I get it. It's like the machinist. This guy sleeps, he can, or he can't sleep, so yeah. he's an unreliable narrator. Like, when you can't sleep, you can't trust your memory because everything's delusional and weird. And I was like, okay, got it. See where this is going. No, I was really overthinking it. Yeah. I was overthinking yep, it. Yeah, yep. the movie's not interested in that. No. I always, I think my uh, my template for the um, the, the, the detective that, you know, is at the end of his rope and mm-hmm. self-medicating is always Arnold Schwarzenegger in mm-hmm. End of Days. That's he, my favorite yeah. one. <laughs> Him in that dark room <laughs> just drinking that whiskey or whatever he had. Yeah, that well, was great. Whiskey with like eggs in it. Yeah, and so, yes, and like, yes. And, and milk. And like, Pizza you're crust. Like, what yep. the fuck? I forgot we did that. Many. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that is a good one. No, it seems one. like I think I like that so much because that scene seems like a parody yes. of these movies. You know, it's yeah. like we're just going to take it to the fucking extreme. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> They're all like, you know, and then maybe this is the thing, like the 2000s, like all your police guys, it, they're all stories of redemption, I suppose. Right. Yeah. And to, to set up that they're at their lowest point, they're all addicted to something and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever and trying to re, you know, recover from this. Yeah. Past I mean, event. it's. It's not far off. Most, I mean, a lot of um, first responders do end up having like psychological issues. That I'm they, sure that they oh, do yeah. try to not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I say a for a story, do. what we were saying yeah. even going into this is so like, well, they're always this, you know, burnout, you know, because mm-hmm. yeah. I guess you have to give the guy a care, a, a, an arc. Yeah, but it becomes like uh, well, it used to be a cliche, but now it's a trope. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> in movies. <laughs> Which is heavily concentrated, I think, in this uh, this era. Go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, he is going to therapy. He is going to yeah. therapy, yeah. And it seems to be helping. Yeah. Yeah. So who's he seeing? Marissa Tomei. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's in this movie. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. We established that she is the Love psychiatrist her. in the vastly underwritten part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dr. Basically. Polly Beltram. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there a romantic interest there? Um... Mm, is I, that what but it, I, mean, I don't I know that violates like you know yeah, professional yeah. Uh, lines but is that what they're but trying it happens, to I'm sure I I I think there are, I think there's a I think there's a caring nature between them I don't know Did she did she come see him in the hospital? Yes. She did. Okay, that's Yep. Already breaking the 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 relationship and between them. Yeah. The I, but the, I necessarily if he's had a traumatic experience yeah. they might have his <laughs> His yeah. therapist bring him to the hospital. My therapist. It, it just the way they were interacting was more like, "Glad you're still okay, friend." You yeah. know, it felt. And my, I think my problem was the score at that moment was swelling, like it was a romantic yeah. scene. Yep. Yeah. And I was that's. I sorry, I don't like Marco Beltrami. I never have. And the more <laughs> I'm exposed to his stuff, I'm just like, you're reading this scene way wrong. Like, yeah. why? Why is there like a romantic swell? Like they're about to kiss, like in this mm-hmm. scene. Yeah. 
let's have dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Because the audience wants it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it feels like it's going for like the obvious and not really actually thinking about like the movie that you're in, you know, like the, the, mm-hmm. The uh, uh, the context of what, what's mm-hmm. going on in the story. Um, a lot of pop tunes on the soundtrack. It's kind of like yeah. it feels like garbage was in there at some point. Mm-hmm. Like no the doubt, pimps and, are. yeah. Mm-hmm. Rob Zombie and there, all the songs are used at really weird moments, like inappropriate times. They I would go even say. to visit the mother of this a woman who's been murdered and they're no, playing, missing. Oh, she's missing. Yeah. And, and they're you're like, flipping through her underwear drawer to this. What fucking song was this? It was like some chuggy metal from that time, yeah. though. And it's like this. Was that the sneaker pimps? It might have been. It might have been. Yeah. It's like unusual you know, soundscape. But OK, so um, now relocated to Chicago. Right. Uh, there's there's murders uh, starting up. But we already know from the opening credits that, OK, Keanu Reeves is in this mm-hmm. and he's clearly the guy that Spader dealt with in um Los Angeles. Yeah. But Spader's never seen him. This guy is, you know, and again, this is that kind of serial killer worship where it's like he's, you know, he 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 studied murder. And yeah. He, you know, he wears gloves and you'll never find DNA. And he's so good that he just we can't catch him. Eleven people into it, you know. Yeah. OK. And now <laughs> he's in Chicago. How do we know he's in Chicago? Um, He he calls James Spader. Well, first he sends him um photographs. Of his victims in Chicago. One of them is James Bader's neighbor. Do you guys think this really happens? Do you really think cops are getting like pictures sent to them by serial killers like this? Like sent right to their desk? Well, I mean. Come and catch me. You know? I'm, <laughs> yeah. I just like. I mean, does, I mean, how often do we think this really happens? Yeah, right? I mean, like, we know like things like this have happened. Yeah. Like, like with like, BTK and stuff. BTK right? Yeah. Zodiac famously yeah, yeah. like, hey, break this code and right, you'll find me. Right. You know, like this yeah. does happen. Right. But, whether like, the movies would have you believe this is a cop's daily life is getting serial killer <laughs> pictures every yeah. day. Sp- I mean, I'm sorry, James Spader, your record against this guy is not good. Maybe you should be taken off this case because if this guy got away with 11 murders, yeah, uh, yeah, you're doing it wrong. Like, so yeah. I think they were right to take you off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do uh, briefly want to say there is another member of the cast and uh, he's probably the most developed character outside of oh, these yeah. two guys and this is uh agent uh, special agent no he's, he's okay. just a cop hollis played yeah. by chris ellis chris a Ell- uh, hollis mackey detective yeah. hollis mackey i <laughs> this love this guy i love this love this, this character's great he's a great and, character and chris ellis is like a guy that you've seen in like a ton of movies like you know mostly michael bay stuff or something he always mm-hmm. seems like he's the you know, you know crew chief on the aircraft carrier yep. or something yeah. like that. The no nonsense guy that's gonna get it done yeah. yeah so this is a different kind of role for him he yeah. had to love it because it's like this is a lot he's more having than, fun yeah. yeah so but i love this because like our one of our introductions to him like you were groaning and you were laughing. And, that, and I loved that. <laughs> it was just over the top as but fuck. And you're like, what funny. kind of movie is this? Yeah. It was funny. The humor in this movie is, is it but intentional? That wasn't supposed I, to be funny. That's I what I'm saying. But no, like, that was supposed to be funny. No, they yes. thought that. Well, yeah, but they thought they're introducing a badass. Yeah. You know, I think that's what they're, they're going for. We thought it was funny. And yeah, it has a humorous component to it because he's just so fucking badass. Yeah. But explain this, how badass yeah, is this guy? Yeah. So James Spader, I'll set it yeah. up. They, he is like, you know, I got this phone call or I got, you know, I yeah. can't remember if he called her. I got the picture yeah, of the called, girl. So yeah, James Spader came home. They were like investigating the murder in his in his apartment building. So he comes home and he was just like trying to get upstairs to his apartment and Hollis stops him and he's like, what are you doing walking all over my crime scene? And he's like, what? And was she murdered or something? Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, what makes you say that? And he's like, well, you got a bunch of cops, you know, ruining your crime scene. And he's like, well, here's my card. Give me a call if you saw anything. So then obviously he finds the photos. Keanu Reeves has actually sent him a photo of the victim. So he calls him. <laughs> and the dude is in pursuit of like a car chase when he gets the call and he answers the phone. And he's just like one hand on the wheel. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In the middle of a screaming car chase. I mean, like he's like, are you busy? Can you even call you back? He's like, no, I can talk. <laughs> I like the way in this scene, like James Spader always has to hold the phone away from his it's ear so because loud. the squealing yeah. of the tires, right. That we're hearing from yeah. watching the car chase right. is actually coming through the phone. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Yeah. So, James Bader's talking to him and he was like, yeah, I, I, I know who the killer is. And 
He's in. He's still in pursuit of this guy in like mm-hmm. a fucking eighty four, you know, Camry or something. And he's like, oh, hold on. He gets out of his car, starts chasing the guy, <laughs> tackles him, yeah. drops his phone, and it then goes sl- it goes, goes sliding, sliding down this dock. Yeah, he's like, he tackles the the uh, suspect, and then he picks up. He's like, oh, okay, where was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, what a fucking badass this yeah. motherfucker is! Yeah. And he just steps over the guy, and you're like, you shouldn't you arrest him or put him in cuffs? And you yeah. look, yeah. knocked him out. Yeah, and you're I like, loved it. <laughs> you're like, okay, this movie is playing on a different level right. than. All right, so Keanu Reeves is uh, lurking. He's watching. He's, he's watching. He's watching James Spader. For the title. Yeah. Um, and he's watching um, uh, yeah. these different women mm-hmm. that he's yeah. choosing. And he's as he's his called victim. James Spader, and he was like, you know, why'd you move to Chicago? It's fucking cold like, here. Yeah. He's fucking, yeah, it's fucking cold here. Yeah. And he's like, you just go to that same crappy Vietnamese restaurant every night. I would watching. like to go to this restaurant. It's, it did not look looks, crappy. I was like, fantastic. yeah, I want to go eat yeah. here. Oh, if yeah, this, if this little, is a real, yeah. Restaurant. this yeah. looks great. Yeah, if this is a real restaurant, we should we should go. Yeah, it oh, might yeah. Be. yeah. 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 like those noodles look fire. Yeah, yeah. It we'll take so a freak good. show field trip and go visit the filming locations of the Watcher. <laughs> Ducks <laughs> hanging in the window looked great. So this is, I guess, setting up the central dynamic of the movie. Mm-hmm. This is the um, the cop and the killer. But they're like two sides of the same coin. This mm-hmm. is also Classic. a thing you see a lot in, yeah. Mm-hmm. That uh, yeah. you know you can't have one without the yeah. other. We like need one each other gives power. the other meaning yeah. for yeah. Uh, living. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see uh, Keanu Reeves stalking James Spader and breathing really heavy, and mm-hmm. and the, the psychiatrist is like, "Well, did you miss him? You know, maybe mm-hmm. he missed you, and you know, like mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff." What's that going supposed on? to mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so. He does choose his victim. Okay, so yeah. well, he has an mo. Yeah, he's like, he's like, we're gonna we're gonna play a game. I'm gonna send you a photo of my victim, and I'm gonna give you a day to find her. This is because he's like, well, you've retired or whatever, and you're just not yeah. feeling the spark. And I'm gonna yeah. help you find that yeah. again, buddy. Yeah, you know, we're gonna- having a baby to save the marriage here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So he, because uh, he's a charming guy when he approaches these women that he's... Uh, Very charming, yeah. yeah. Um, again, I guess he's, he's crazy. We, there's no kind of motive. There's no backstory. There's nothing to him. He uses a piano wire mm-hmm. to kill his victims mm-hmm. um, because it's sharp. I don't know. It he looks cool. kills them cool. at exactly 9 p.m. because... Yeah. Mm, uh, feels like you wouldn't want to be that predictable if you right. don't want to get caught, right? Yeah. But that's the thing, though, is <laughs> yeah. he's, he's playing the game with them. Yeah. And that becomes, like, the thing, right? It's like, yeah. if you can save her before 9 p.m., you know? Yeah. I always strike it exactly 9 p.m., which, of course, sets up a bunch of, like, yeah. happenstances that yeah. has to happen for the they, victim to get to a he's, certain he's place made it, at 9 p.m. James Spader has made it clear, like, this was not his M.O. in L.A. This is a new routine because it's he's changing it up. This is different. He's like, I'm part of his routine regardless. But he has a new routine in Chicago. He didn't do this game in L.A. He didn't need to. Because James Spader was engaging with him, he's doing this nine, you know, one day to find her. Here's a photo, not by nine o'clock, because that's the game he's established. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the first victim, mm-hmm. there's a citywide manhunt because yeah. uh, the the picture has been sent to James Spader. He gets it all over the mm-hmm. teletype. Sorry, uh, he gets it all over the television, <laughs> and he has Ellis get on TV, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, or Hollis, Hollis yeah. And um, they, so yeah. in a, in in Chicago, even though it's all over television, they're handing out flyers everywhere. Somehow, uh, this, because it's before Facebook, uh, no one, this girl never actually sees her picture that the cops are actually mm-hmm. looking for. This. Wouldn't this movie could only exist in two thousand, like or before, or yeah, yeah but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking like with the camera and the video camera, all that stuff. But yeah, I guess it still would work before. But yeah, it can't, it can't go a second past like two thousand two, maybe even at the most, because yeah. like nowadays, yeah, like you said, Colin, it would be a local news post on Facebook that gets shared. There'd be fucking Amber Alerts probably or oh, whatever yeah. the adult equivalent yeah. is. Yeah, you get alerts it, on your phone. Yeah, which is kind of strange. I mean, I guess this is why uh, serial mm-hmm. serial killers don't do this because uh, they actually want time with their victims mm-hmm. you know and 
you don't have that when you basically say, I'm going to kill her by nine o'clock and I have right. basically mm-hmm. a kidnapping. You have to follow mm-hmm. through with it. Yeah. Otherwise they know that they can call your bluff, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but it's, a, it, I guess, you know, that's what we're, you go to the movies for. Mm-hmm. You're seeing like these bizarro situations. So the entire police force is, uh, canvassing the streets mm-hmm. and trying to get, you know, yeah. identify this woman. They take the picture and they blow it up. Mm-hmm. Make it real big so I can yep. see different blurry parts of it and figure out what they are. Mm-hmm. Enhance it. Is, yeah. uh, Enhance it. Yes. He's going after uh, potential victims that are um, like uh, uh, subject to uh, flattery. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. his yeah, MO. In, when he was in LA, he didn't have a specific type. But in Chicago, since he's sending pictures, it's got to be women that are dismissible that you mm-hmm. just walk by and never really notice Yeah, because I think that first girl, it, it, like, this is her first job, so it's like, okay, maybe this is, she moved to the city for the mm-hmm. first time or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, and so people don't really know her yet, mm-hmm. and so he does, he, he finds and kills her. Mm-hmm. And so, does not kill her cat. Takes nope. her cat with him. Frank lives. Yeah. This is important because the Saturday Night Freak Show has a history. It's because Sean wasn't it's here. It's because I Cat picked murder. the movie. Okay. <laughs> no, if Sean would have been here, the movie yeah, would have changed. That's true. If Sean had been here, the movie would have changed. It would have been a different movie where that cat died. There would have been a deleted scene it's, where it's the, yes. Sean's cat. Yes. I would have been like, I don't remember this. I've seen yeah. it a million yeah. times. Yep. You haven't seen the, the Sean cut. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a beautiful cat. there's mm-hmm. another girl who's like a homeless girl that mm-hmm. uh, becomes, a, I didn't believe her performance at all. I don't know. Yeah. It was like miscast or something, yeah. but he uh, tracks her down, kills her right at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. And it was really funny. I was telling. I don't know if you were down here and tell Michaela they messed up earlier in the movie when they were looking for the blonde girl at the Photoshop. The, they cut to the female detective sitting there and her computer screen was a picture of the next victim. Oh, yeah. 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 Editing mistake. <laughs> yep. yeah. 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 Kind of yeah. We noticed, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, um, so Keanu Reeves doesn't have a job, right? Like, where does he get? His no, money? because he lurks around the cemetery yeah. all like, day. All he does is, yeah, lurks yeah. yeah. All yeah. he does is watch. All he yeah. does is watch. Like, yeah. so is he rich? Is we that, don't know. See, that that's the th- and at least that Micah Monroe movie Watcher explained. Yeah, why mm-hmm. the Watcher does what he does. Yeah, yeah. Go, go watch that movie think, or listen to yeah, us talk good, about it on our end of year. Yeah, yeah like good, mm-hmm. I think it, several of us recommended yeah. that mm-hmm. on the end of the year. Yeah. Um. But this one, yeah, it's like this guy is just chaos incarnate. You know, he's the Joker. Uh, he's he's a movie serial killer, mm-hmm. I guess. That you know, yeah. I mm, towards the third act when he gets real jokey and goofy, it's not working it's like for me. Like a Batman villain. It's yeah, but like an Adam West Batman. Villain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's because it's Keanu or if it's just because the character sucks. Because I'm not really a Keanu Reeves fan. I think the guy right. kind of sucks as an actor. So like. This performance just isn't doing it for me. And I mean, we've already established that he did not want to do this movie, so he's really he's phoning, not he's, he's phoning, phoning it yeah. in. Yeah, he's phoning it well, in. And that, and I don't know. I mean, I guess that's a you know. I mean, I like Keanu Reeves enough, you know, and the stuff that he's in. And I think you know he kind of occupies right now, currently, like the same space as like Nicolas Cage. It's like if you survive in Hollywood for mm-hmm. as long as you do, eventually you're like kind of this revered like, whoa, wow, you're like an actor that like I grew up with. Yeah, you're, you're still, just you're. Just beloved stuff yeah, yeah. Yep. lifetime achievement award yep yeah um so but seeing him try to be like a villain it's like there's nothing there you know it's like yeah. i don't read him as uh psychotic it's just he's reading the lines that mm-hmm. are in the script and mm-hmm. you know like there's that one scene where so he eventually you know by watching uh james spader finds yeah. out that james spader goes to see a psychiatrist so mm-hmm. he goes to the psychiatrist there's a close call where like he can get in the elevator with Spader and Spader doesn't know who he is. Mm-hmm. Which I'm um, this stretched believability yep. to me big time because yep. he knows what his silhouette looks like, right? And he never his hair is the same. Same the thing. same jacket, same, same leather look. Jacket. Yeah, never That's- once this guy's this guy is a terrible cop. Because if he's already like eleven murders deep on this guy and then he's right next to him and can't even and recognize him. He knows him. that he's watching yes. him. Like, he yeah. Knows. He knows that he's being watched by this guy. And he even well, like says, Oh, sorry. And like yeah, you they heard his bump, voice. They yeah. you know bump into voice. each other. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't believe that this guy's the world's worst cop, man. <laughs> Take him off this case permanently. I know because Will Graham would have intuited it. Yeah. Like, well, when like, else is he gonna catch this guy if he couldn't catch him when he was right fucking next to him? <laughs> well, also, you know, and, and also with the first victim, there's that scene in the mall when they're all like, Okay, she could be anywhere and she's literally right behind them yeah. in the elevator. Yep. Mm. Yep. Come on. Yep. 
Yeah, Will Graham would have had that clocked. <laughs> Only one person would have died if Will Graham had been on this case. He would have figured it out right away. He would have figured it out. Yeah. But I, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I did, I was, I guess, because of the, the genre, I was kind of, you know, drawing comparisons to Manhunter. There were, yeah, you know, that's what I was thinking too. You, you know, in the, I think the fingerprinting scene, mm-hmm. you know, it's like we got prints off the FedEx package and Ernie Hudson's like, take it down to, you know, run yep. them. And, and James Spader saying that. And it just seems so plastic, you know, compared mm-hmm. to like Manhunter, which feels like, ooh, this, you know, you're mm-hmm. engaged in mm-hmm. how the, this is like, the 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 papered over version of like well, well yeah i mean this is the, doing the same story 20 years after manhunter yeah, you know so it's like the the facsimile mm-hmm. of how you do these it's like police work doesn't actually happen you don't walk into the you know uh the the chief's office and be like yeah. you know we got this is the fingerprints on the yeah um, i like to imagine things happen at this crazy frantic pace all the time <laughs> like you know yeah. just always people running being like send it down to that lab and then call this guy and so search for every seattle's best in chicago remember that that the seattle's best plot got dropped real quick yeah it's a, yeah she's outside a coffee shop yeah. in the picture and we gotta drag her down yeah um so but when keanu reeves goes to visit the uh psychiatrist that's also mm-hmm. where we see that he has robot vision we associate the robot yeah. vision with like that is his perspective yes or whatever the the the, the vhsc strobe yeah. vision um but he performs like a robot, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess maybe because you say like he's phoning in this performance, he's just yeah. like, here, I have to look evil. So I just kind of have a neutral expression. And I, you know, mm-hmm. as I clock you know, where all the records are kept on the, the your previous patients, because that's why Digging he's there. Digging through the files. He's got lots of files. Yeah, there's some good file mm-hmm. porn in those. Yeah, mm-hmm. you guys have like this unhealthy obsession with the file folders. It's always interesting to it's see. It's not unhealthy. It's satisfying. In a drawer where you just kind of, your fingers go over and that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, like, that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like it's a Rolodex. great movie prop. Yeah. Okay. It always no, looks mean, cool. Well. Scrolling through folders on Finder on a computer is not the same <laughs> as flipping through a file cabinet. Yeah, it's like I don't pra- want to watch anybody like do that. It's practical effects and CGI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Going through the yeah. contacts list on your phone isn't as good as a Rolodex. Roll- exactly. Right? Rolodex exactly. is always way more it has satisfying. Yeah. Zip sound. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. Just like how we were talking about slamming down a phone to hang it up. That's <laughs> that's the way to go too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can still throw your phone out the too expensive to do uh, yeah, that right. and it doesn't have the same satisfying click when it hangs up you yeah know? you can't do earlier it earlier today when i got home i went to toss my keys and take my phone and i did the opposite <laughs> i threw my phone and took my keys <laughs> and i was like no yes. she dives across the floor yeah. it's okay it's slow motion. On the couch. Okay. we're fine but, I, I had a yeah. really interesting thought about phones today is that I think smartphones are the only thing that there is no difference between the poor and the rich, right? Like celebrities and like rich people, there's no like Rolls Royce like right. phone, right? Everyone's got yeah. a fucking iPhone or an Android phone, That's right? Very true. Yeah. Like this is the great equalizer. Like I have the same phone as like fucking Beyonce. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Like That's very you know, true. I, unless they're keeping something from all of us pores and we don't even know they about could be. the rich person. It's also phone. possible that you use the same toilet paper as Beyonce because I think, yeah. you know. But I mean, when it, when I think about like, but your... there's still, yeah, there's different quality levels of yeah. toilet paper yeah. though. Yeah. They there's probably, probably like a 50 ply for Beyonce. Yeah, like yeah or there's probably one that has like one. gold flakes in it or some shit yeah. like that, you know. But like when it comes to like cars or clothes and stuff like that, they, they are galaxies ahead and, yeah. you know, there's no like $10,000 smartphone that anybody's using, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's true. I love it. It made me feel good about something yeah. for once. Yeah. <laughs> I like that for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, uh, the plot uh, mm. after the yeah. psychiatrist's office. Right. I think um, 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 what happens? I think uh, <laughs> well, Spader, we lead to the cemetery. Well, there's a chase yeah. scene, right? Uh, a very yeah. exciting. So after, after the... Oh, they catch the, when he kills the homeless girl. Yeah, he kills the homeless girl. A near and miss. James Spader has kind of like a meltdown. Mm-hmm. Another well, but, another victim. But there's that chase. Scene yeah, he that, chases you know, them. Yeah, mm-hmm. the car chase because you got to have it in the middle of the movie. And you were on your phone, and I was on my phone, and Michaela probably was the only person who saw because it. it was like there's a car explosions. chase. Yeah. And he get, we know where we are in the movie. Yeah. And he gets away. He doesn't like kill his partner or yeah. anything. There's a, but there's a great chase with a huge explosion. Oh, that was that car chase. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah. I did see the explosion. Yeah, he yeah went through it was a gas awesome. station uh, yeah. and knocked over the the pumps, and then the cops, the Chicago cops, all arrive. Yeah, and, and yep. he just he just sets it on fire and watches it explode. Yep. 
It's yeah, great. because yep. at this point in the movie, damn it, we need something to happen that's uh, exciting, and, and mm-hmm. that's a pretty big uh, mm-hmm. uh, explosion. It's huge. Yeah, a real explosion. Mm-hmm. Um, because later on, apparently, we couldn't afford a real explosion. Well, in the climactic scene, which mm-hmm. we're approaching, so James Spader goes to mm-hmm. meet the killer at oh, yeah, because he's, he's he has like a an episode where he ends up in the hospital after losing. After the chase, he doesn't he doesn't get him. Mm-hmm. He's lost another victim, so he has kind of like a, an episode. He ends up in the hospital. Yeah, Ernie Hudson That's, and the other detective are like, you know, coming to his yeah. door, and I'm like, why are they here? Because he's a welfare to check, I guess. Yeah. Like, so the boss shows up. Nice of him. Yeah, that's nice. Ernie Hudson's a straight up uh, guy. You Love know, Ernie so. Hudson. Uh, so, um, dude has an H today. <laughs> yeah. But after the hospital, while he's in the hospital, uh, the, the cops get another mm-hmm. photo and that photo is of the woman that we've seen in the flashbacks mm-hmm. that James Spader failed to save from the burning building. Who is she? So she was his, essentially his girlfriend, um, that she was cheating on her husband with James Spader. Mm hmm. And, and that was because the whole mo- through the movie, I'm like girlfriend or his wife. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, no, he was actually like having an affair with this woman yes. and she is buried in Chicago. And so he has moved across the country mm-hmm. to be in the city where she's buried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's which, not uh, weird uh, at all. <laughs> yeah, so well, we've weird. established she's got PTSD and yeah, suffers all I these. don't know that that's going to help. It's like how in Star Wars, uh, Anakin Skywalker, after he got melted on Mustafar, then built his the Darth Vader temple on that same planet. It's like, mm-hmm. dude, why do you want to live yeah. inside your trauma like that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> It's the guilt. Yeah. The guilt. He wants to stay there because of all the guilt that he uh, contributed to her death. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Counter Reeves wants to, calls him or no 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 because he's seen the photo on TV he knows where to go he yeah. rips all that shit out of his arm the IVs mm-hmm. and all that and heads out of the hospital and goes to the gravesite and Keanu Reeves has been standing there all goddamn day yeah. hoping that he would well, see the picture on TV. Well, we've already established that his entire life is based on sitting and watching, so he's clearly patient. He's yeah. probably, so I don't think sitting in a cemetery just chilling is really a big deal to him. And so Spader gun drawn approaches and this is the big moment between the two guys and uh well, I guess He's like, that, I'm gonna kill you and he's like, Well you could But but then Polly's gonna die. And dun dun dun. Mm-hmm. She's held somewhere and so Spader says, Well take me to her. Mm-hmm. And so they have this massive heart to heart in the car. Yeah. Which basically underscores the idea that like Keanu Reeves just can't live without James Spader. And, mm-hmm. he, and the explanation is, this is the only like real insight into his psychology that we have. What is mm-hmm. it? Um, it's his attachment to James Spader. Yeah, but he says, but why? He says, it's because you thought about me all the time. Yeah. And no one else ever did. Mm-hmm. But you thought about me. And so now I think of you as a brother and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay. All it's right. just a delusional... But then we get the good, the best yeah. like retort ever to that is like, do you know how many active serial killers there are in Chicago? Five. Oh, at least 11 in the Midwest. You are my job. Your paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You hit my bus on great. Friday. Yeah. I got another yeah. one on Monday. Yeah. Yes. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's an unrequited love story is what's yeah. going on here. So possibly Keanu Reeves' character is closeted gay and, you know, yeah. really wants to. I don't think that's a. I, okay. I like, I like that it can be interpreted that way though. Yeah. I. <laughs> I just want to be able to insult somebody by being like, your paperwork that was pretty is good. so good. Like, nobody likes paperwork. Jesus Christ, that's <laughs> a real insult, you know? And we don't is... like paperwork, but we like when they're in the file. We like, we like it when it goes in the file, yeah. You don't want to be paperwork. No, you know? no. But, uh, this, um, the, well, there's the, the car scene, mm-hmm. the heart-to-heart that leads to the recreation of the traumatic mm-hmm. event scene, which is yeah. he's got... Polly tied up in a room with candles and um, a lot of fucking gasoline. Yeah, a mm-hmm. lot of gasoline and there's like a fucking gas line's about to go. Yeah, it's all very on edge. So you're on the edge of your seat. Yeah, this is like, obviously. Yeah, because uh, all Keanu Reeves wants is he wants James Spader to thank him for giving him a reason to exist mm-hmm. the way that mm-hmm. Spader gives Keanu Reeves a reason to exist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why he kills people. Mm-hmm. Just for the attention of one person. Mm-hmm. The one he watches. Because he's a watcher. Mm-hmm. All right. So what happens? How do we get out of this situation now that we've written ourselves into it? 
Well, um, there's guns. There's, oh, uh, James Spader has a pen in his pocket. <laughs> 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 and he stabs Keanu Reeves in the neck. Mm-hmm. And then uh, candles tip over. So the fire sets. And there is like a ticking, basically a ticking time bomb. Mm-hmm. This room's about to go. So pressure gauge on yeah. like the boiler or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You, yeah. Did this happen at nine o'clock? Did it happen at nine o'clock? Yeah. I mean, because we've set this up in the movie that like nine o'clock is the time that he always kills his. No, we just oh. were forgetting about it for this scene. Well, right? yeah. <laughs> he's got he's got Polly. He doesn't have the yeah. He doesn't have the timeline anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because they're in this together now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not the game anymore. So what was Keanu Reeves' goal here? I guess uh, he keeps on saying that you know uh, you basically complete me and mm-hmm. uh, I can't do this without you. I have to have you chasing me. So, is this like the end of the like? Is this is a suicide uh, situation? Is that what he's setting up? He's like, I'm done. I'm tired, and I want to, you know, resolve this. I I think it is. I think it's just like a we have nowhere else to go situation. So I think the plan is to just like have them all go together. Mm. That's what I think the plan is. Okay. Because it's not explained, really. No, like, there's not. nothing that would lead to this. And like, how come you couldn't yeah. keep this game going on for like? Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, he killed 11 people and he couldn't catch you. Yeah, because he gave in because he just wanted to get the attention. Yeah. So does Dear Polly survive? Mm. Yeah. So James Spader and Polly um, are trying to find a way out of the room. Keanu Reeves catches fire at this point. <laughs> just great. <laughs> well, so he, much yeah. fire. Because so he much injures... Fire. <laughs> Spader, right? He shot him in the leg. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, and then mm-hmm. uh what knocked the what started in the fire? So when he stabbed Keanu Reeves in the neck, Keanu yeah. Reeves fell knocked over, over knocked the candles a over. candle. Yeah. And there was gasoline everywhere, so it immediately caught fire. That's why he probably shouldn't, you know, yeah. gasoline is a you know mm-hmm. yeah, contain that shit. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you end up burning, you know, that in, was the, in idea. the gasoline. That was yeah. the idea. He knew that eventually the place was gonna go. We're all gonna that go was his up plan. together. Yeah. So this is kind of sets up a montage. This is kind of interesting. Keanu Reeves goes up in flames. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, you know, we see his face in it because they do uh, CG fire yep. on him. Um, what? You, how? How? How they pull that off? I would think uh, in twenty twenty three, it's not great. In twenty in two thousand, not bad. It's probably okay. Yeah, yeah. it was not. They bad. looked terrible back then. How yeah. was, let's admit this to ourselves. We were like, ooh, they're going to get better at this in the future. In 2000, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. It's followed by a special effect that uh, it was bad even back then mm-hmm. and is horrible now. But first, how do we get there? Because the, the cops show yeah. up. The cops in Chicago, I love this, they uh, show up in force. Uh, helicopters, like military-grade yeah. helicopters, swoop low through the streets. Uh, because it's all very exciting. Yeah, there's zip line guys coming down on zip yeah. lines. SWAT uh, team everywhere. Yeah. It's great. I know this is a full response for mm-hmm. this guy. Yeah. Um, and they're trying to break down the door, but if backdraft taught us anything, it said, <laughs> damn it, you gotta check that. Well, these are fire these aren't firefighters, yeah. these are they're cops. Yeah. So they break down the door and they create a backdraft. And yeah. so a uh, huge massive CGI fireball blows out mm-hmm. yeah. uh the into the hallway. Yeah. Not in the room, strangely enough. Well, no, because it sucks it out. Okay, so yeah. they should be fine in the room because they got a little bit of time. So they are like, we're going out the window. Yeah. Yeah. So they and they bust defenestrate the themselves. Yeah. They bust yes. through the window and then a flaming Keanu Reeves follows them out Which the is window. hilarious. And yeah. about in the Chicago River. CGI <laughs> fireballs blow yes. the fuck out of the side of that building and they look awful. Yep. It looks pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. It was PlayStation 2 mm-hmm. you know, probably pulled this off. It's real bad. <laughs> um... And so uh, 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 Spader and uh, is able to rescue. Yeah. Uh, Marissa uh, Yep, and, Polly. and get yeah. her out of the water. And then it's like we got to check the body. And here's yeah. where you know I guess you're programmed to like. We well, got something right. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this? I mean, because what happens? Yeah, so he gets out of the water. They pull Polly out, and um, he immediately says, "You know, get that body out of the water." Which I liked. Mm-hmm. Like, get the body. Let's let's yeah. not do any of this. He's coming back shit. Right. Um, and then we just have a voiceover from earlier in the movie when he's like, um, you know, time's up from the, mm-hmm. yeah. from the um, 
therapy appointment. Mm-hmm. I guess we do see that um, Keanu Reeves is badly burned or mm-hmm. whatever the corpse is like. Mm-hmm. You know, he's floating face down. So he's dead. So he did get him in that, uh, <coughs> pardon me, um, climactic thing. He set him on fire and that was it. He's he's over. Yeah. Movie's which, over. He killed which, the, killed yeah. the bad guy. Set him on fire. Yeah. Just you didn't like, have to shoot him six times or no, anything? No, just like he set his lover on fire. Mm-hmm. Justice. I'm kind of disappointed, I guess, by this. Mm. Uh, why? I'm going to explain it. Because okay. there's that, the setup for the Detective Hollis is yeah. so over the top that the the death of Keanu Reeves at the end is like, so like, oh, you you, you shot the, th- he set himself on fire and he's, he's dead. I expected yeah. some kind of like, you know, you got to shoot him six times while he's on fire and, you know, shoot him with a rocket launcher. He's just a dude. He's just a dude. Yeah. He's not a superpower. It's not, yeah, he's yeah, not. He's just not a guy. Michael Myers. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's you know, it's justice because he set his mm-hmm. girlfriend on fire. Mm-hmm. So he dies by fire. Yeah. Yep. And there you go. Yeah. Pull an out. eye for an eye. Mm-hmm. Shot of Chicago go. skyline. Mm-hmm. And credits. Not a 90s uh, they pop don't, tune, Yeah. Pop nope. They don't go back to Dragula. No, <laughs> I was surprised. I was, I was very surprised. I was too, actually. And yeah. and part of me was like, "This is gonna be a Creed song." Or yeah, something? something. Yeah. But it's Marco Beltrami score. And then you're like, "Man, man, he knows how to use an orchestra." Mm. Debatable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of the watcher. We're gonna go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch it. See what I did there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> watch it. Got okay. it. Okay. Uh, but first, we're going to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. It's good to know he still comes for everybody else's clap and not just Sean's, yeah. you know? <laughs> Sometimes you know it's like with dogs. You don't you don't keep them up on their tricks. They yeah. start to forget them. You know. Are we giving that away that like Sean is the one who summons Igor? I mean, I think people I think, know I, that. I think I that's think canon, right? Said that okay. before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and when Sean's not here, I summon him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Sean is on assignment this mm-hmm. evening and will be joining us next week. Uh, but. Um, First of all, uh, yeah, we want to uh, 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 tell you where you can uh, follow or contribute to this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At, at Saturday Freak Show. show. <laughs> or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Watcher. Joey Blythe writes in and says, this movie is not to be confused with the Watcher series from 2022 <laughs> yeah. or the Watcher series also from 2022 <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Watcher the movie also, also from, from 2022, 2022 yes. yeah. or Watchers from 1988. Yes. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I love that we are all in on that same joke. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Holy yeah, cow. Too many. Uh, we, we need to pass a, a law on this, right? No like watchers. an emergency bill. No more Watcher titled movies. Yeah. Uh, Asobi Detura writes in and says, how complicated are your signatures and how easy would it be for an assistant to forge it? Oh, mine would be so easy. I'm so lazy with my signature. I do, you know, like a big first letter and then a bunch of like squiggles and then big last letter. And that's kind of it. Mm, yeah. Mm. It's all about the pressure and the speed that you can do it. I mean, it takes a forgery is like a, you know, this yeah. guy must be good. I feel like, though, I feel like, you know, like celebrities, when they sign a ton of their books in advance to be sold at like stores and stuff, and, like if you keep doing your same signature over and over again, I feel like it's going to change a little bit because you're yeah. just tired of the repetitive well, at, motion. At my old job, I used to forge my boss's signature mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. You get really good at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you can always trace it, too, you know, just lay a piece of paper over it. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I used to like yeah. take it to the window. Yeah. Just trace it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, supposed to be admitting this stuff. In the, okay. Yeah, uh, I did it with her permission. Carson <laughs> Snar says, you're watching The Watcher, but who is The Watcher watching? <laughs> it's, I mean, this is who the gift that the keeps watcher? on yep. giving. <laughs> uh, last week, we watched a movie called Demon Warp, and Michael yeah. Whitaker writes in and says, uh, oh, uh, George Kennedy's in the movie, and yes. uh, he can't see his face without hearing Ted why from Naked Gun? Uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, I'm, I'm going to test out this uh, tranquilizer yeah. dart. On, yep. uh, yeah. Yes. Um, the That's week too before, funny. <laughs> before that, we watched a movie called Killer Fish, and we have a science report from Saturday Night Freak Show science correspondent Brett Williams. All right. He says uh, the piranha 
or translated from the language of the Tupi people as fish tooth or maybe biting fish, has never been responsible for a single human fatality huh. in history. Aside from the movies and TV, we have Teddy Roosevelt to think about for the lethal reputation of the piranha. He was visiting the locals in 1913 in the Amazon and wanted to give them a good show, netted off a section of the river to fill with piranha that they had starved, and then walked a cow into that section to get, to get a dramatic show of hundreds or maybe thousands of starving piranha stripping the meat down to the bone. Needless to say, this is not the natural behavior of the black or red belly piranha. Ew. Wow. That's so the locals barbaric as well. set that. up a show. For the visiting yeah. U.S. president, uh, Travis said on that episode, hearing Sean say "Margarity" <laughs> was giving me flashbacks to grumpier old men, and I kept thinking <laughs> Walter Matthau saying Sophia Loren's character's name. Yeah. What was her character's name? Anyone? I don't know. Don't I'm remember. hoping it was something along the lines of "Margarity." I would assume so. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember her name in that. Okay, neither do I. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it. And grumpier old men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was well, there a third she- one? Sophia Loren was in Grumpier Oldman. She wasn't yeah. in the first Not one. The first. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. It was yeah. Anne Margaret in the first one. Taking the skin boat to Tuna Town. Oh, Burgess gosh. Meredith. Was <laughs> He's a gift. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's taking old one eye to the optometrist. <laughs> 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 All right. So. You do know that movie better than I thought you did, Colin. I remember not, those because yeah, uh, but it's not the type of movie I would ever expect no. you to watch. You don't watch I'm, comedies. Yeah. I worked at a movie theater uh, when that was playing, and yeah. that was the the outtakes that they played oh, during okay. the end credits. So I was always as an usher. You saw those? Yep. That was the point in the movie. Now it all makes sense. Those movies are fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty good. <laughs> Um, so thank you all. Let's reboot those <laughs> movies. Cast current oldies in those movies now. I mean, we got 80 for Brady, right? So let's give us some more in yeah. that. Yeah, vein. don't I, it feels like there are those movies, you know, yeah. uh, the geezer movies, you yeah, know, they come out every once in a while and it's a uh, bucket list. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, oh my god, that's the thing. That's nowadays, the nowadays, it's like, yeah. <laughs> nowadays, it's like older people like doing like one last hurrah i know which is sad they're doing yeah they're like doing young man this is the last time i'll real fuck so yeah Yeah. exactly yeah uh, last Las vegas Vegas. yeah yeah (laughs) we're all gonna die so let's go to vegas one last time yeah (laughs) morgan freeman was in that too wasn't he he was he's in like the death i was in vegas when they were like promoting oh yeah 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 they were like laying out the red carpet for him yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. because who do you have you got like michael cain and uh morgan freeman Mm mm-hmm Aren't they always uh, uh, Alan? All well, he is bad. Mm-hmm. Not Alan Alda. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam. Oh, um, oh shit! Yeah. Yep. Oh, Alan Arkin. Kelly. Alan Arkin. Thank yeah. you very much, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, because he died, right? He did and, die. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately. Um. Anyway, thank you very much, all of you, uh, for writing in. Uh, we appreciate yes, it. Thank Thanks you for so following much. along and watching this movie. And tonight, we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of it, starting with. Uh, Colin, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't have that, that, that show. Uh, like yeah. cut me off. I there. forgot I'm supposed to be Sean tonight <laughs> for some parts. We have least. to take, yeah. we have to, we have to take turns being Sean. Yeah. There you go. yeah. Um, we all have to share the responsibility of being <laughs> Sean. <Yes. laughs> um, okay. The watcher. Um, I had seen it in 2000. Totally forgot about it. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's an omen that, you know, it's like, it's a completely forgettable movie. So mm-hmm. it was like, okay, we're going to see it tonight. And this is, uh, you know, like, uh, let's, uh, you know, with some time and the passage of time, take a look back at it. It's a um, A to Z movie, uh, meaning <laughs> that it just kind of, uh, it plays like an episode of a television show. It kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. It just had no, like no life to it at all. I thought it was boring. Um, I suppose what it has is the performances of Keanu Reeves just being like a non-entity and uh, James Spader, but you've seen him in other stuff. So it's like you can watch other movies with these guys in it to get something (laughs) better. And it was just kind of like, all right, it's your garden variety, like, you know, serial killer cop chase movie. And um, yeah, I don't know. It didn't, uh, it just didn't do it for me. So I I had passed. Michaela, what'd you think? Um, so I really enjoy beat the clock movies. Like I brought in time, so, yeah, you know, yeah. um, but I really enjoy a beat the clock, like thriller movie where there's like murder on the line, you know, like, uh, it gets my adrenaline up in like a good way. And it, it gets me like tense in a good way. And this movie, I was just like sweating it a couple of times. Like, especially that first girl, the yeah. like Photoshop girl where that one cut it really close, you know? 
I was enjoying that. I think that, I mean, when I was thinking about this, I was like, okay, so obviously it's going to be like three women and he's got the first two are going to get murdered and the third one's going to be the one where they catch him. But the pacing of this movie made it feel like it wasn't that smooth between, you know, it should have been like, yep, first killer, second one, we almost got him, third one, we stop him, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, they overthought it, I feel like. Mm -hmm. I feel like they overthought some stuff in this movie and overcompensated in other areas. But I still really enjoyed it and it was my first time watching it and I liked it, even though, like I said, I don't particularly care for Keanu and I really don't care for him in this movie. But it's like, I kind of appreciate the weird anomaly that this movie is. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to recommend it because I enjoyed it and I think there's enough good stuff here to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, you've definitely seen this type of story before, but I'm always happy to see this type of story. I love a cat and mouse police serial killer movie you know Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna recommend it holly what'd you think yeah um so obviously i've seen this movie a lot Mm -hmm. and um oh the original title was gonna be triven by the way driven 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 oh he's he's driven but we don't know i don't like that yeah i don't like that Uh, so and then it was changed to the watcher um Mm -hmm. And it was only because there was something else coming out at that time called Driven. Was it the Stallone movie? The yep. Ronnie Harlan? I think yeah. so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with, with a lot of what you guys are saying. You know, this movie's not perfect. It's it's not reinventing the wheel as far as, like, the catch the killer kind of movie. Um, <clears throat> it was doing some experimental stuff visually for 2000 Mm -hmm. (laughs) but story-wise it wasn't really like doing anything new but i still really enjoy this movie i'm with you michaela i like the beat the clock aspect Mm -hmm. um and i'm always a sucker for a psychological thriller um i love the police procedural thrillers like this um so i know this this movie's like catnip for me so even though it's got problems i'm still all about it that's how Um, i feel too yeah Yeah. (laughs) i'm like yeah it sucks but god damn it (laughs) i like it Mm -hmm. um yeah, I think the entire story behind Keanu Reeves is really fascinating, and I know that's why a lot of people like watch mm-hmm. this movie is to is because of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I like this movie. It's it's not good, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, but, yep. but there's yeah, like you were saying, Michaela. There's there's different aspects of it that it still it does what it's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know, it gives you those suspenseful moments, mm-hmm. and um, I I think it's it's enjoyable to watch um i think it's funny and kind of charming um yeah i'm gonna recommend it i enjoy it i have a soft spot for it always have mm-hmm. yeah all right watch the watcher you're mm-hmm. saying right. yeah i'm gonna say watch a watcher mm-hmm. okay all right so that's watch the watcher. all of the watchers <laughs> all, of all the watch watchers. them all and then rank them all yeah, yeah. every yeah, every yeah. Every the title i'll of make watcher. a i'll make a letterbox list that's just ranking, ranking the watchers yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're watching the watcher yeah watching right, the right, watchers. Is. should you watch the watcher yeah, should you watch the watchers <laughs> there yeah. it is which watcher should that's you watch? the, that's the bloody <laughs> disgusting <laughs> headline yeah. yeah uh so next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by kayla what are we watching next week we are going back to Canada <laughs> and making a stop in Cronenberg Town oh, for okay. Exes Tens oh, from 1999. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. yes, Jennifer Jason Lee and Jude Law and a Ian Holm and a bunch of other people. Yep. So David yes. Cronenberg takes on video games. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> what you've always Tens, wanted yeah. to see. Cronenberg, yes. eh? Yes, 1999 video games, yeah, there too. You go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, Mm -hmm. so that promises to be a weird one. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.